Hello, everybody. Welcome to What You Need to Know Headlines. I am Sybil Wilkes. It's Monday, and it is Chris Paul and Huggy Lowdown Day. Hello, gentlemen. What up, Sybil Wilkes? What's the deal, Sybil? <laughs> and, and, and whoever else I missed saying hello to. Hi. What's up? How you doing? It's like we're missing somebody. Yes, we are. Koi is not with us today, but she will um, return next Monday. She got. I may not be here much longer with Huggy wearing a Yankees hat. I was gonna. I was gonna start with that. Um, that apparently is a problem. He must have bought that at that new store, Dick Riders. <laughs> oh my God! That, that's how we start off, right? <laughs> Happy Monday. That's how you start off, right? <laughs> really? Sporting goods. I didn't say the whole day. You must have seen uh, George Wallace the other day <laughs> talking about that. Um, happy Confederate Memorial Day to you guys. Oh, and I didn't get you anything. <laughs> really, Silver? It's they have a day? And they, they have several days. This is just happens to be Confederate Memorial Day in South Carolina. Oh, shit. The state government uh, offices were closed today. To oh, oh, what they call Monday. <laughs> <laughs> right. Really? They closed the offices? They closed the state offices. <clears throat> Some local government offices also closed in observation of the holiday that is held every year on May 10th. Wow. South Carolina is among a handful of states in the South with this official holiday. State offices in Alabama and Mississippi closed down for their Confederate Memorial what? Days last month. Are you serious? And for those of you keeping count, yes, I, what did I say? I said Alabama and Mississippi. And, and Mississippi. There's, there's also Texas and Florida and uh, Tennessee. Tennessee has Confederate Decoration Day. Wow. I guess you decorate your favorite Confederate uh, or Confederate. Uh, um, I don't know what happened. What happened? We hear you. Ah, uh, you hear me, and I can't see you. I don't. You, the video just uh, the video just went away. But I can keep talking. That's okay. Yeah, yeah we're all still here. Okay. Still here. So this is Confederate Decoration Day in Tennessee, and they, you know, have all of these. So Confederate Memorial Day, and um, <laughs> yeah, all right. now, somebody just turned the camera, camera all the way around. That, that's yeah, yeah. That? That's yeah, yeah. That's that's turned that. around. So, she you, said, she you, said, damn it, Sybil, I'm getting my cameo today. <laughs> I'm getting my name in the motherfucking credits today. <laughs> what the hell? So That's you a guys see, ass boom like you got there, Sybil. Oh, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's very extra, hug. It's very extra. I don't know. I don't can, know. Can you see us now? I cannot. No, I oh. can't. I can't. But uh, I'm just on 10. Like, there we go. That was funny. Okay, uh, now I can see you. Um, sorry about that. I don't know what happened to the uh, to the uh, laptop, but it just went. the The picture just went away. So that is, and maybe that is the uh, ghost of a Confederate general or two, um, and not liking that that suggestion. Um, here's what else is topical in the news today. Uh, the FDA announced this afternoon they are allowing the use of Pfizer coronavirus vaccine in young people between the ages of 12 and 15. What do you oh, think? That should thrill Matt Gates. Matt Gates. <laughs> he, does not, he does not have to wear masks around these young anymore. <laughs> Matt Gates can hang out again. Right. <laughs> he can resume. Right. It's uh, current activities or alleged activities, I should say. So that means uh, our young people- He can people reactivate his cash app, so. <laughs> For for um for happy meals and things yes, like that, right. yeah. Um, so what do you think? Uh, allowing our young people now to get it. I mean, we had sixteen and up, and now uh, an even younger uh, age range from twelve to fifteen are now going to be able to uh, take part in uh, the coronavirus vaccine, and this is the Pfizer vaccine. I'm all for it. Let's open. Let's open it up so they can really enjoy Whatever. these years. Everybody, yeah. everybody need to be vaccinated. Right. Right. And, and that's what you would think people would be saying, but there's still a lot of reluctance, and especially well, we know who who really is is uh, reluctant to do this, and and those are all the people that you know are in in concert 
with the former uh, White House occupant. There's a lot of that. Um, but some schools, did you see that some schools are, are firing teachers that are getting the vaccine? Really? Yes. Yeah, what, there, there what are schools. What is this? What, what state is this? What, uh, one was in Miami. Oh. It was a private school in Miami, um, but there are others that are discouraging people from the, getting the vaccine. The Ron DeSantis Charter School. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing how many people just believe the BS they read about this vaccine. Like I saw, okay. I saw a tweet. I read a tweet from a woman who was talking about how she's heartbroken. She drove 11 hours to go to her daughter and her uh, son-in-law bought a house. Mm -hmm. She drove 11 hours to see them and she bought all these expensive antiques to give them in their house. Right. When As soon as she got there, then when she was almost there, they called her and said, we don't feel comfortable with you coming in because you've been vaccinated and we don't want to hurt our chances of having a baby. <laughs> what? How she said, crazy is she that? She said she was yeah. broken hearted. She went the rest of the way and just dropped the antiques off on the steps and left. Shit, I'd have kept my antique. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would have kept my antique behind in that yeah. car and not dropped off anything and just turned right back around. I mean, who that started way. that crap? Who started that, it? If you if that, the vaccinated antique, people. The antique's going to be around longer than the couple <laughs> be. Vaccinated people cause you to be infertile. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. That's, that's another one of the, the ridiculous rumors right. that's going that's crazy, on. Bro. That's being tossed that's out there. The problem <laughs> is, the problem is, our, we who believe in truth should have put our own lies out there first. Like right. we know that we should, Huggy, we should have already spread it. Hey, we got the vaccine. My penis grew eight inches. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a line. There'll be a line down the yeah. door. <laughs> you don't got that uh, Pfizer. Uh, you know that right. Pfizer. Ooh. That Ooh. Pfizer make it riser. Right. <laughs> Girl, I took that Moderna and I just tightened right up. <laughs> <laughs> I like it's a rejuvenation. <laughs> right. We we should have put out our dis misinformation That's right. first. That's absolutely right. You are we absolutely. Should, we should have newsmaxed it, bro. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I'm not sure what is going to come as a result of this. They they say that uh, this will accelerate the nation's efforts to drive down infections and also allow middle school students to get vaccinated before school starts this fall. And uh, that is very important to get the kids back into the school, into the classrooms. As, and give the teachers peace of mind. Yeah. Yeah. First because they are concerned about that because, you know, these kids, if, if they are coming and they are and, and, and they are not vaccinated, uh, whatever, you know, they're taken back home. And or, you know they're coming from reckless households. So, you know, <laughs> that comes from the family. If, if the parents ain't enforcing it, then, you know, you know damn well the little kids don't give a fuck. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, they 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 are moving right ahead. Moving right ahead. Um, let's see what we got here. <laughs> Sonia Maples, you're absolutely right on YouTube. Says no one talks about what's in that McRib, and you're, hey, you're I, right. I, I, I had a McRib, and you my, penis, ask my penis, my penis grew eight inches. <laughs> <laughs> And my wife tightened right up. <laughs> <Like real. laughs> and, and for that matter, any of the uh, of us who go to uh, Jack in the Box at two or three o'clock in the morning and get those two regular tacos, you know, you know, there's some mystery in that meat that the is in that meat. taco. Yes, the mystery meat. It really is, but, but damn, they're good. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I also. Taco Bell no, Jack in the Box. Oh, That's the even box. worse, Huggy. Yeah, it it's, is. It's like Jack, really? Right, and right. yeah, so yeah, that's really better keep that box close by, civil. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm saying. That taco ain't nothing but leftover meat. Yeah. <laughs> and at three o'clock in the morning, it's just fine. It's leftover just fine. Leftover meat. <laughs> they um, soak up the liquor. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. just saying. Mm -hmm. It's like a sham wow. <laughs> I don't know what Absolutely. that means. Bro. I, I I like the reference. I haven't I haven't heard a sham wow reference in a very long time. So thank you. Oh, I need to update my fucking reference software. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> 
they still work. So, I mean, the joke and the, the product. So there you go. Um, you, I love, you know, I love talking sports with you guys and, and you were having your banter a little bit about your baseball teams and, and the choice of headgear for, for some of us, uh, as well as a drinking uh, cup. But this truly is an example of white privilege. <laughs> they are still trying to put this guy in the NFL. Tim Tebow has signed or is going to sign a one-year contract with the Jacksonville Jazz. What? I didn't hear that. Yes. As, as a tight end. As a tight end. I don't yeah. give a fuck. What position? Are you kidding me? 33-year-old wow. year old Tim Tebow is expected, uh, the deal is expected to be completed in the next week or so. Wow. Of course, he's been drafted by the Denver Broncos back in 2010. 2010. And he played baseball too, Chris? And he played baseball. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he yeah. tried. Uh, he has... He has bounced around from the New York, from Denver to the New York Jets to the New England Patriots, and finally a short stint with the Eagles in 2015. That's the last time he was in the league. Now six years later, he's getting another shot. And he was preaching. And then there was that. You know, there was the he he took a knee, and and nobody had a problem with it. Um, but the the other fellow that took a knee, uh, he is still waiting for a job. Wow, that is that is fucking insane. That is insane. And, um, he did, and he didn't have he's not any, anywhere close <laughs> right. to the career that Colin Kaepernick had. Right. So. Exactly. He's not even a journeyman. He no. can't even, you know, right. it, it's like he's just, he's failed up and up and, and continue to do that uh, on, on very minimal skills, if that. And even in baseball, he's, he bounced out of baseball this year. Oh, that is ridiculous. He, he retired from baseball this year. But you know the dif the difference is like uh, the reason he's getting this shot is because his former head coach, college mm -hmm. head coach Urban Meyer, is now right. the head coach of Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. Surely, surely the people who have had relationships with Colin Kaepernick throughout his career, yeah. who know, who understand how good he was, and he's a good person, not one of them would ha are, are willing to reach out to him and give him another shot. Tim, look at all the heat that Urban Meyer's taking today because he knows Tim Tebow sucks, but he's still bringing him in because you know what? I have a relationship with him. You're telling me Colin Kaepernick did not build a relationship with any of his former coaches, right? Come any, on. any former they, man. They don't, they don't want the, they don't want the, the backlash. Man, they don't, they don't but, want it. But, but the working relationship, as you say, that he had, that's not enough. To for these men to stand right. up and say this they cross, man, they don't, they don't cross the race barrier. They don't cross that race mm. barrier. And you know what? Let's say let's say this too. It's it's it's, and it's to be really competent. messed. It's really yeah. messed up that none of the none of the black head coaches mm -hmm. or uh, what is the black GM? Is that in Miami? Yes. What, what, none yeah. of them. None of them are just have the balls to just say, you know what? F it. I'm bringing Colin Kaepernick in. Right. I'm going to end. The, let's end this right now and move on. Right. Like that, they are so powerless to be in such powerful positions. It's it's because, because crazy. They jeopardize their lane. They Again, Urban Meyer. Their... Urban Meyer, brand new head coach down right. there for right. Jacksonville, and he's putting. He doesn't care about the criticism. He they don't care. care about the heat. Because he, he will. He will always have a job, bro. Right. He will always have a job. He will <laughs> always have a job. And and that is something that the uh, black coaches and the the general manager down there, as you said, not going to have. I mean, cats who we know we that appear to be so strong, like Mike Tomlin of the, who I love, Mike Tomlin of the Steelers. You think he's so thorough and he runs his team? He but, knows he knows he couldn't do it. Yeah, he knows he knows his limits. Tiffany Bond said, "At this point, if I was Colin Kaepernick, I would say f the NFL." I'm thinking would, he probably already has. <laughs> I, I would say f the fucking NFL, my damn self. <laughs> I mean, right? But that's all. That's also like saying uh, you say f to the woman who don't want your ass no more either. <laughs> uh, a, wo a woman, a woman dumped your ass, and now you walk around saying, "Man, f her. I don't want her." <laughs> and she was dating Tim Tebow while we were. <laughs> I know, I know, I believe at the NFL too, but to Colin Kaepernick, he he worked so hard his I, entire life to be here, and there's there's no there's nothing comparable. If there was another think, NFL, if there was another I, football league that he could go to that's similar to the NFL and prestige and talent, you can do that. It's a monopoly. This is what he did since right. he was a kid. This is what you dreamed of. You only get one shot. Yep. How many how many players are willing to collectively 
stand up for, uh, for Cap and say, this is this is what it is? That's a good question. And Chris, How you, many? Uh, just 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 take a guess. Just let's just kind of throw some some numbers out there. Do you think would be willing? I mean, we know Eric Reed is his boy, uh, you know, but at this point, none. At this point, I wow. believe I believe the NF the black players in the NFL have they've moved on as well. Hmm. I believe I believe if there's something involving social justice, they are more likely to speak up on their own now. Mm-hmm. Like the internet, like the NBA players do, but I think everybody has moved on, including remember when Jay Z said it, he's like, you know, yeah, like we basically yeah. moved on. That's their feeling that, yeah, to be complaint for us to be complaining that Colin Kaepernick has, I, I, doesn't I, have a I job used, is, I think he used the wrong words regarding that. You know, mm-hmm. they moved on. Now, I don't know how they moving, but this shit is fucked up, bro. But it's just oh. always going to be a reminder every time one of these horrible, horrible. White dudes get signed as a backup quarterback. Mm-hmm. Bro, they, bro, they be finding these dudes fucking Home Depot, bro. I mean, <laughs> right. These guys have moved on from the NFL. Right. I think you still got it in you, man. Look how you throw right. that lumber across the yard. <laughs> um, it is really? time to move on That's to our shit, trending bro. video. Michael, is- Michael J. Fox has a better chance playing quarterback oh my God. Oh my God. in the NFL. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Than Colin I, I, I believe that. I believe oh my that. God. Oh my God. Uh, it's time to move on to our trending video. And I'm really interested in this um, for a number of reasons. But uh, the month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I just want to salute Lizzo uh, and her transparency this weekend on TikTok. Can we take a look at the first video, please? You know that part of sadness where you feel like a burden on everyone and annoying and nobody cares about you? <laughs> Can we get rid of that part? It's like, yo, I'm already sad. (laughs) Kind of add insult to injury that I have no one to talk to about it. It's crazy. Like, why do we feel this way? Why do we feel this way when we get sad? I don't want to feel this way anymore. I want to feel like I do have someone to talk to. People do care about me. I am loved. I'm not alone. That's how I want to feel, but I don't. I don't feel like that. Okay, this is embarrassing. That was disturbing and so sad, and and so transparent on her part. Um, as I said before, very brave of her to you know. Not only to record it, but then to put it out there for people to see and and to hear. And and I don't think it was an attention getting device or an attempt to uh, get attention. Uh, she doesn't need that. Um, but for her, I thought was just a, an incredibly brave move on her part in talking about Maybe it. Maybe she needed attention in that way. Well, it was a cry for help. Uh, it's a cry for help. It is a cry for help. And um, so she did give an update on this. And uh, responding to a, a fan who assured her that she is loved, and she did take to TikTok again, and this is the second part. Took a bath, talked to my therapist, talked to my medium, breathed, um, focused on gratitude, um, tricked my dopamine levels by getting excited about something in the future. Um, eight cinnamon roll hot chocolate um and now i'm in bed i do feel better uh journaled a little bit read a little bit um i do feel better so thank you oh y'all are so sweet I think that was what we got to do in this country is really we've got to get past the feeling of mental invincibility. Like so many mm. people, they think they're so because they're so strong and I never go through anything. I can't believe you can't pull yourself out of this. The truth is so many people are in denial yeah. of denial. their sadness. They, they know how to completely bottle it up, bury it. And keep it moving, but you are fucking sad. 
Yeah. You are you are depressed. You do have demons that you're battling, but you just are in denial about it. And then you have the you have the the balls to judge other people who are sad. Like I can only imagine what the comments were under right. the first video. Yeah. And the first right. the first comment will be, "You're rich." Yeah. Right. You know, just famous. imagine that's yeah. a, whole, a whole level of uh, uh, hate right there. You know right. what I mean? You know. Uh, a person on celebrity status, they mm -hmm. don't, they don't get the, uh, they don't, they don't get the chance to be, uh, you know, mentally unstable. Yeah, or, you know, yeah, or, because because we, the, all of this stuff is expected what, of what them. Do you, they, what they do you, don't. So you know, I guess a person would be like a mentally embarrassed. Yeah. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like a mental embarrassment type thing. Like. Yeah. You know. I, to... I don't know about you guys, but this has been a particularly difficult year for me, and I, I, I can really identify. I didn't, yeah. I didn't go to, I didn't call my therapist or my medium, <laughs> but right. you know, um, this has just been, this has just been a lot. You know, right. starting a new job, losing a job, right. uh, being in quarantine and right. uh, pandemic, and seeing all, all these lives that are lost in this, right. and and in our business, um, you know, where you're there to to. Um, educate people and to give them the news. And then you got all of this news that's going on and this really brings you right. down. And so this has been particularly difficult for me. And so I really admire this young woman um, who has, has taken to video and, and with her probably millions of fans, right. um, it's been, you know, come forth and said, you know, I'm having, I'm having a moment, I'm having a bad day, I'm having a bad month or year, but I just wanted to share with you. And so, that's you know I think is 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 to her credit. And, and, and but just imagine how many people she helping. And she is by, helping by, that. by right. being transparent like that. Right. And you, Sybil, well, you're not alone. It's been a difficult year for me. It's been a difficult year for Huggy for so many people. And I think yeah. I think what is what is important about you knowing this and me being able to say this and Huggy is it, it means that you you have developed at least at the very least a relationship with yourself where mm. you can recognize these things. Right. right. Again, like I said before, there's so many other people. You, you're going through something you and you don't see it. You're with yourself more than anybody else. Yes, right. And you don't see what you're going through as somebody who knows you. Yeah. And they'll, they'll, tell they'll tell you. They'll tell you. <laughs> they'll, they'll tell, they'll tell you. Damn, that's damn sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> right. So that that says that about Lizzo also. Lizzo Lizzo knows herself. Or she mm -hmm. she's she has a relationship with herself where she recognizes that she is sad. She's crying for no reason at all. That she could, you know, she just feels empty and everything. And she reached out. Now, because show business is show business, you got also gotta wonder. And hope the second video is right is real. Right, right. right. That's so, that somebody you know. She has people. She has publicists and handlers that said, "Girl, you better hey, you do a to. second video yeah. right now." Yeah. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, wrap your you know, head up. Look like you've taken that long bath, and you know, wash your face, and and get back out there and put that video. And and but that, and that also is life. just a, another face of depression. Also, you're yeah. you're sad. You're sad. You're, but or you or you actually do feel better. You think? Yeah. And then later on that night, you're sad again. Right. So there's no way to regulate it, but again, if you if you can try to have a relationship with yourself and know yourself, at least at least you can admit it to yourself, right? Because it can't it can't be healthy to walk around pretending all the time, right? Right. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so let me ask you guys because mine is uh my uh go to in order to to alleviate some of this is you know to watch old uh, television comedies right now i'm going through a, a designing women phase <laughs> um but you know just to watch old stuff like uh what happened that to that brother Sybil? what was his name he died Mitch Jack taylor he yes died. he died, yeah, yeah. Shaq died. Yeah. he died wow. a few years ago yeah wow. Wow. very young uh age and uh but that was uh that, that show had a number of deaths in it right. uh, of the stars there. Wow. Um, but Meshach, I think, was one of the first. Uh, he uh, battled cancer wow. and um, and passed away. But funny stuff. So what? how do you guys counteract that? What, what is your go-to uh, some ice cream huggy or to, <laughs> to go to the red plastic cup um, uh, and asking that's people? His, how... That's his go-to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know. You know, it's funny you say that. I'm I, I, throughout the quarantine, I was watching old television too. Like always, always watching. Where's he at? 
Rod Sterling's Twilight, all these Twilight oh, Zone episodes. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm but I'm watching like old uh, Hitchcock and shit mm -hmm. and stuff. But then that started bothering me too. I'm saying to myself, why am I so into these shows? Like, I'd rather go backwards than forward. Mm -hmm. Like, like why does why do these old shows? Why are they making me feel better? Is it because I appreciate the shows, or I appreciate the time in the past when I was watching these shows? Right. Right, and takes so, you back to that time in the comfort of your parents' home. Uh, or, I mean, yeah. or it may just be fucking overthinking. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> right. Well, there's That's that three too. things, bro. Ron Sterling started talking to me. Picture <laughs> well. A nigger losing his mind. <laughs> I better put this shit out. <laughs> Um, that, uh, that's that's hilarious, and 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 Huggy just took himself out. Um, <laughs> that's when you spill your red cup on the keyboard. On the keyboard, exactly. Right, right. Um, and 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 asking those that are that are watching and listening today, uh, right now, uh, if you have any uh, things that bring you comfort uh, during times like this, and you're having a a, a, a having a bad day or uh, going through a dark period, um, what lifts you and lifts your spirits and and like us you know what i'm watching chris uh right. along with designing women are old johnny carson episodes on antenna oh, wow. tv oh wow it's really interesting the things that they got away with in in that age of saying you know with uh their their uh, references to people and uh you know things that we now are so politically incorrect we cannot say um it's very interesting mm. um which is disturbing on a whole nother level a lot of people. Okay. So let's see what they have to say. Oh, wow. Uh, stop sharing everything with the world. Some of their business should be their business and not safe for the world to have too much of their personal lives. Um, that is what they do say about social media and, and people there. Okay. Uh, Nike O Tim, Nikki O Tim says, why tell the world so they can come back with negative comments, more depression. And, uh, that seems to be, okay. That seems to be the theme in the messages, but you know what? Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to say, because of this particular topic that that may not it may not pertain to this because it is very important right now mm -hmm. that we normalize having mental illness mm -hmm. you know because it's, it's just it's just the you i can complain about any part of my body i can tell y'all my back hurts i can tell you i have a migraine i can tell you my feet hurt mm -hmm. anything and nobody says it, but if i say I'm having yeah. deranged thoughts. All of yeah. a sudden, everybody gets away gets away from you. And, yeah. and it, I mean, Bruh. I think I think Lizzo is just using her platform, and and also she obviously was in a very desperate state right there. Yeah. But I think I mean we we need we need celebrities like her to speak on it because then maybe it can change the, the way that these young the people. Yeah, the, the, the way these young it's right. too, it's probably too late for people our age. Right. You know, we we always just gonna say people are crazy like, for the most part. Like right now, look at the comments. Everything is like, why you don't tell nobody? Mm -hmm. That's that old school mentality, and, right? And, but we need to change it for the young people. Talking yeah. about Rod mm -hmm. Sterling and Twilight Zone, my <laughs> shit went great. You know? <laughs> what the fuck? I need to charge my computer. I wish you to the <laughs> cornfield. <laughs> 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 It's 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 really interesting the response there, Chris. You're right. right, it, right. It is, you know, we don't want to. You know, it used to be. You know, people, we didn't talk about the c word, and you kind of whispered these things, right. or you know, you talk about uh, people have in fighting diseases. That's and that old like. school mentality, though, man. That's yeah. that old school shit. You know. Right. And and I think that we need to talk about it not as much as we possibly can. Perhaps it's uh, it's too much of an overload on some people who may be going through the same thing but don't want to acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think that, uh, this being a uh, mental health awareness month is showing us that this, that we are not alone and that this is a discussion that needs to be had. I mean, even in talking about, you know, I was talking to someone, um, Donnie Hathaway's daughter and about having, um, finding a, a therapist and, and how do you do that? You know? And I'm like, it's hard enough, you know, to find somebody you like to hang out with, let alone you know, trying to find a therapist and, and, you know, what that looks like. And nobody wants to talk about that. It's very rare now that we hear, especially black folks talking about uh, talking to their therapists. Right. Right. You know, but I think people just need to, I mean, you need to open up your thinking like Sybil Wilkes, 
the host of this show just sat here and said that she's had a very difficult year and she's been mentally stressed out and everything. But if you notice, she's still civil. <laughs> it, 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 does, you know, it doesn't mean that when you're done, you put on a dog costume and chase cars. <laughs> right. How did you know? But you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's not like you got to You guys got to understand. You no, really illness. been watching a whole lot of fucking Twilight Zone. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mental illness does not mean you have to I be know. locked up or committed right. or anything. I mean, right. It means I'm going through things. Right. Yeah. Right. And and if you and if you observe yourself again, you'll see you're going through things and you're having Absolutely. mental difficulty. But but your but your the, your code, as we see in the comments, keep it to yourself. Don't talk about right. this. Right. Right. But, but Come you, on. You, you gotta you gotta learn how to feng shui that shit out your life, man, or or, or to adapt or to have shit in your life to alleviate. That 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 stress and that load, you know what I mean? Don't sway that out your life. I Come thought here. yo yo, I thought yo yo would like that. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you got to look like that, Chris. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers to you, little lady. When, uh, when when someone when someone's mental illness takes them to that extreme where they take themselves out, mm -hmm. so now the question is, right? Did they completely hide it? Or, or did they did they have any, did they have no one in their life that they even felt they could talk to? Are they are they surrounded by the people who said don't talk about that? Right. Or That's something or thinking. something's wrong with you. Or yeah. I'm gonna, I'm yeah. going to get cut off by my family. Mm -hmm. Or I mean, is that did they have no one they could trust to talk to? Right. Or the, those that they did trust just said, like you said, uh, 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 yes people. No, I don't want to hear it. Uh, right. Yes people. Right. You know, you gotta have people that truly gives a fuck about you. Right. You know what I mean? That's true. Oh, Andrea Caldwell says, I work with college students and mental health is a real deal. They will listen to Lizzo when we older folks just say pray. Mental health awareness plus prayer is so important. Whoa, we're having a storm here. All right. Sorry, sorry Ramsey. Um, Ramsey. Yeah, Ramsey the Wonder Dog. <laughs> That's a cool last name. Ramsey and the end crowd, Chris. <laughs> So um, I, this is something that I do want to come back to, and, and I hope that we will continue the discussion going. And, and I think that Jay, Jay Anthony Brown has, has called and said he wants to talk about it tomorrow. So uh, it is something that, and perhaps you guys will want to join us. And, and, no, Jay Anthony Brown, don't be calling on our motherfucking day. Is he crazy? That nigga's crazy. That nigga's crazy. That nigga is crazy. <laughs> Uh, if that weren't already taken, I would say it'd be a great title for something. That, I saw that nigga with a suede <laughs> umbrella, so well, that nigga crazy. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about what's in the newsletter today. And, and this is something that's been talked about all weekend, um, but about the federal grand jury that indicted the four Minneapolis, former Minneapolis policemen, starting with Derek Chauvin, uh, saying that they violated the civil rights of George Floyd. Duh. Um, but it is good that the Justice Department, the Biden Justice Department, has uh, come through. And, and you got to specify, Sybil. You yeah. got to specify that. You got to say the Biden Justice Department. Yes. Because, you know, previously, uh, to, previous to January 20th, yeah. that wasn't, that wasn't, ha that wasn't happening. Right. That was definitely not happening. Um, so these guys, uh, th the, the, three policemen who uh, have not been on trial yet, and they will have a trial later this year. Uh, they appeared in federal court on Friday. Derek Chauvin uh, will appear, uh, but he's got some other things coming up next month. He's going to be sentenced uh, for the murder of George Floyd. So that is uh, what's happening in Minneapolis. And, and, and in Louisville, um, they came out with a, a uh, report that uh, the Louisville Police Department, the higher ups tried to sweep under the carpet. Uh, they had a, an inspector in the department uh, said that uh, they did, the policemen involved in the Breonna Taylor case and shooting and murder were wrong. And um, they put all of them in the danger, uh, including Breonna, as well as her boyfriend, Kenneth. There's two Walker. stories in a row that you could have said, duh. Like, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, right. like, it's like right. there's so You're much right. investigating going on to just come up with the obvious. Yeah, yeah. You're the absolutely obvious. right. Yeah, it, from our, from our it, duh it, file. It, it, the limbs of the fucking, the, bot, the shit they do, bro. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay, I have another entry into the Duh file. Uh, this is the uh, GOP voter restriction bill that has been passed in the Texas House of Representatives. And uh, now they're moving to come to some sort of agreement on this bill. But 
what was really interesting is the language, the code language that was used in one of the original um, bills by a Republican, as you might imagine. And, um, and he was questioned by a Democrat and the Congressman, uh, the representative Anchia questioned uh, this Republican uh, named Kane on the use of the phrase purity of the ballot box. This was once used in the Jim Crow era as well as uh, in the early days of, of voting in the Texas constitution. And this had, was what they used, purity of the voting box, which they used to exclude black voter participation. Uh, and so they, they did this and this little guy, he's a little kind of nerdy guy. But and so damn young. I mean, you are you are you too, saw, too young to be this racist. Right. Right. That's like that's left behavior, bro. Right. That's that is behavior. it. You're you're absolutely right. Too that's young. Behavior. And that is he's one of those, th those young tiki torch racists. Yeah. yeah that yeah. that we that we saw in, in Charlottesville. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um <laughs> okay. Story number four in the Dove file, um, the Republican governors are cutting that extra $300 a week in the jobless benefits. Uh, they say that this is what is preventing people from uh, going out and getting jobs. And so they're gonna cut the, the benefits. And I think Alabama was, uh, the governor of Alabama today announced that she is doing this, uh, Ivy. Governor Ivey. And so uh, they say that this is what is keeping people from going out and getting jobs at extra $300 a week. And people are saying, I need this money because otherwise, if I go out and find a job, what I'm getting paid is not going to help me in terms of child care, in terms of rent, in terms of food and all of this other stuff. Um, because the jobs and people are saying, well, there are thousands of jobs available. Just go out and get a job. But they're not paying. So, so easy. So easy to just and, say that. And, 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 job. And these big companies are having a hard time finding workers right now because mm -hmm. nobody nobody wants to go out and work anymore for those wages. So what do you do? Let's cut their benefits and force them to have to go get these minimum right. wage jobs now. Yep. You know, Absolutely. they're getting they're getting their late night calls from I don't well, I don't want to get sued by calling out some company, but uh But you know. Yeah, you, know, you know who it is. You know. That's and you're right. absolutely right. And, and so this is the way that uh, they're going to clear this off of their roles uh, and, and force people to go back into uh, what could be a hazardous situation, right. with little or, or no money or little or no improvement on what they were making before and uh, try to find someone to take care of their children while they're back at work and, and, and all of this. It's, it's, it's a horrible situation. It absolutely that is. is so crazy. This pandemic has really shown us that this country really, really don't give a fuck. We already know. Yeah, yeah. But this pandemic has showed a whole lot of other people how our country feel about us. You yeah. Know? And, and, and the last four years, you know, yeah. uh, Huggy, uh, it, leading up to a year right. ago. Um, but you're absolutely right. They don't give a damn. They just don't. They don't. Uh, or, 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 or a flying, you know what. Fuck. Um, Okay, thank you. You're <laughs> um, So we talked about uh, social justice, in, and and Coy is not here for this story, but I uh, would like to do it um, because Coy is <laughs> Coy, Coy not here today because one of her plants died. And oh man, yeah, she's having a greenhouse funeral right now. So. <laughs> uh. You are. <laughs> Can, do we take a, a minute to? Uh, yeah, man. Okay. Yeah. Pour a little on the ground or, yeah. or in the plant. Right. Yeah. This is for. No, Johnny, no that, what's, in your, what's in your cup will kill another plant. Don't, <laughs> don't, pour, don't pour that out. Don't pour that out. So, this is a story about uh, Liddell Lee, a black man who was executed four years ago. He was uh, 45 years old at the time, was executed for a murder that was committed in Arkansas that he, from the moment he was taken into custody till the day he died, denied being a part of this murder. He has, he has always stood, or he did always stand and say that I did not commit this crime. Well, in 1993, now mind you, 93 to 2017, uh, the murder was uh, occurred in 93. He was accused of and convicted of murdering a 26-year-old white woman named Deborah Reese, and he was sentenced to death. He maintained his innocence from the 
moment that he was taken into custody. Um, well, now DNA has been found on the handle of a bloody club that was used in the murder that belonged to someone else. Wow. And the attorney with the Innocence Project said that the newly discovered DNA results proved to be incomplete and partial, but it is significant and leaves the door open for more findings. But the governor of Arkansas, no remorse whatsoever, said, well, we did all we could. The Supreme Court looked at it on every level. The evidence that was obviously uncovered was inconclusive. And the fact that a jury found him guilty based on the information that they had, tough. We're the only race of people that oops is good enough for. Man, what? They, what? I mean, they made this country wow. makes life and death decisions for us all time, all the time. And when it ends up being death, it's just a get nationwide oops. Yeah, yeah, get over it, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. Oh, sorry. Well, his sister is pushing forward. Thank God, uh, and to to get more information, to get more DNA, and to make this conclusion. And how many stories do we have like that, though, Sybil? Oh my God, Huggy! Yes, the 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 rogues gallery of people who have been murdered, who have been executed right. uh, on information that was false. Right. Whether it's someone's word or whether you know they didn't have the DNA or they chose not to or they they tossed it in a in a drawer and said, ah, we don't need that. We got our guy. And I'm sure most people would would be in favor of the death penalty if, if it involves one of their loved ones. Of course, but. but at this point, with the technology that we have and, and the, the know-how that we have, scientific know-how, we have to abolish the death penalty if you, you can't get it right. There's no guarantee. If there can be no guarantees, you can't do something that can't be undone. Right. Yeah, absolutely. You can't do something that no. can't be undone. No. Right. Just no. so everybody can feel better. Right. That you, can, you feel better justice was served. Come on. And, and then they're talking about, you know, the, like you said, the fine squad down in South Carolina. Right. South Carolina. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's that's as final as you get. I don't know what kind of fucking liver putting they got down South Carolina. <laughs> Shit, man. But you're right. What what what's in the air and what's in that person's home? What is like you were talking about the, the uh, House of Representatives guy in Texas. That how young can you be to be that freaking racist? Man, it's getting it's getting worse, Civil. I, I saw a video of a uh, uh, council member calling uh, another guy buckwheat. Yeah, yeah. That's in Colorado, of all of the places. Colorado. So. What the heck is going on in Colorado? Well, that's we... not. I mean, you 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 think of places like Colorado. Hey, man, it's very liberal. It's you know, and all of these people. They had a mass shooting there this weekend. Um, this is where Elijah McClain was killed by the police. All of these things are coming out about Colorado. Uh, the mass shooting that they had at the grocery store. Right. Remember, not too long ago. Um, it's everywhere. You, you just can't say, oh, it couldn't happen here. Racism couldn't happen here, and or or, or racist acts, and so. Um, this is uh, the sad fact of life. And this is why I go to watch Designing Women uh, right. every night. Um, so in entertainment, let's turn to entertainment and remind people that tonight, George Wallace is going to be guesting on Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel! Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yep, absolutely. So turn on and uh, let's turn out and show out for George Wallace. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel is on at 11.35, what, Eastern time, 10.35 Central time. And um, and speaking of television, our girls, Kim Whitley and Coco Brown, are going to be making a return to the neighborhood in just a matter of minutes. Uh, in about 15 minutes of the neighborhood, will uh, and it will be a, a new episode. They were on uh, last season and they were such a hit that they are bringing them back. Wow. Uh, to be on with uh, said the entertainer. So, all right, shit. look for them tonight. And can we go to our last video? Okay, um, this is also a part of our entertainment segment. What's the deal, pickles? Is everything kosher? This is your boy, Huggy Lowdown, and I'm gonna review a file of a special lady named Tavonda Wallace. That's right, Tavonda, who goes by the name of Cookie to all her loved ones. And I'm reading here in her file, she's bossy and sassy like Cookie on Empire. But Tavonda had the name Cookie way before Taraji was even in the oven. So Tavonda is the original Cookie. Yeah, man, you the original Cookie, man. What? <laughs> <laughs> 
Bruh, how come you look totally different right there? Than you <laughs> <laughs> bruh, you, bruh, bruh. you know what? You know what's crazy? Bruh, you... I didn't know y'all was gonna run that. I was gonna wear that shit tonight, but <laughs> bruh, that would have been a fail like shit, bro. I, I, I look different right you there. Look different right now. <laughs> what? What it's was it, huh? Shit. I don't know. Maybe I washed my face. <laughs> How did that go, Huggy? It went well. Yeah, it was it great. It was great. Yeah, yeah it, it was great. Well. That's awesome. We gotta That's do it awesome. again. Yeah, we, we got yeah. a date when the uh, quarantine, uh, you know, when the <laughs> pandemic over. You and Cookie. We we're discussing yeah. how can how, what would be the proper way for him to make videos for Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> for Father's Day, you bitch ass nigga. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm saying that's, no, that's all you got. No, because I might have a, a flashback. Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you, Herman! <laughs> Sitting there in the front room or on the yeah, front porch, yeah. waiting. <laughs> Fuck you, Herman! You know how many times I was on the car seat on the porch <laughs> waiting for you? In a car seat. With my name tag on. <laughs> Oh, oh, golly. Okay. So um, once again, uh, I hope that you guys will do that and that uh, people can do it for whatever occasion, not just right. for Mother's Day. Right. Uh, that'll be a good opportunity. So big news in Hollywood today. Uh-oh, 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 Chris. Once again, duh, file. Uh, NBC has announced that they will not be broadcasting the Golden Globe Awards next year, 2022, because of the lack of diversity within the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. You know, that was something. Did you guys watch it or did you did you read anything about uh, all of the, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association that has no real people of color? Yeah, uh, in, yeah I read about it. Of, of among the journalists who make the decisions about right. movies involving right. black people uh, and television shows. So they announced to, they're cutting ties with the Golden Globes, citing the need for more meaningful reform uh, with the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. And you they said the Golden Globes are going to Fox News? <laughs> probably, hug. Exactly. Uh, I, I don't think that, that, uh, that they're done, although the numbers were really horrible this year. Um, but a lot of people did come forth and respond to this, uh, uh, not the least of which was Ava DuVernay. She tweeted out that everything matters, even this. The ripple effects echo through our industry, especially for black artists and artists of color. Kudos to all the activists, artists, publicists, and executives who took a stand to make this happen. Um, Shonda Rhimes echoing DuVernay's sentiment, saying every step forward matters. So many people in front or behind the camera at studios, streamers, and PR firms took a stand to shift a piece of the biz model that affects the economic futures of artists who are often tokenized, not included. Those steps can work in an industry. And lastly, Tom Cruise gathered up his three Golden Globe Awards and tossed them back into the lap of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. What? And dig this, y'all. Keep this in mind. Okay, bro. They were called out. The Hollywood Foreign Press had to be called out just because of the climate of the nation today. They got mm -hmm. called out yep. on this. They were willing to keep it like this forever. If it's no one, if, if no one yep. had ever said anything, there was no yep. push behind the scenes with them mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we need some diversity around here. They were content and willing to stay all white yep. forever with no transparency. So every time that we were like, that's bullshit, Denzel should have won. Denzel right. should have won. Right. He really should have won. Right. But there's not one black person in the room. Nobody's in the room, Chris. Right. They were willing to keep this going. They were going to be all white for all eternity, man. They were willing to go along with their lily white foreign oh, press the makeup. Abbots and DeSantis and Kemp's and <laughs> and, NB, and NBC, NBC is not a, a network of freedom fighters. So right. who, who, was, who was who was squeezing their balls that hard and that hard and twisting them? Right. That so, they had to do this. So perhaps it was the Univision people who were also owned by NBC finally were given a, a little bit of latitude and 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 pointed this out to folks, or the black people that are are being given uh, higher positions within the NBC family are saying, you know what? Because they're in the room, and right. somebody got in someone's ear and said, and because you're right, they don't have a history of being out there, you know, and saying right. we're down with the people. Right. right. 
Absolutely not. Mm. Absolutely not. Um, so, so Tom Cruise uh, picked up his three Golden Globes and tossed them back at the Golden Globes people. And uh, he got, he won the Best Actor Prize for Jerry Maguire. He also won for Born on the Fourth of July and Best Supporting Actor. They won for Magnolia, um, which is a movie that never should have been made. Um, so, <laughs> did you ever see that, Huggy? Why would I say no? <laughs> well, I know that you 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 will watch. You have an eclectic. Hey, don't tell everybody that. <laughs> I, I told you I watched Under the Tuscan Sun in confidence and then you said that critical mind. That didn't eat for you. Huggy is to walk Huggy to walk in the blockbuster video and go right to the romance section. <laughs> <laughs> I was in my home. Blockbuster. Yeah, I was about to say the N word. Niggas didn't know about rom com. <laughs> <laughs> that was the rom com, man. motherfucker. <laughs> I had my own lane, brother. And, what, and baby, it still well, magnolias. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hated that movie. That is like one movie that I booed at at the end. Yeah, me too, yeah. sir. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, are you guys appearing anywhere? Do you have anything lined up? No, yes. we're Oh, yeah. <laughs> we do. We do that shit going on. I'm so used to saying no, Sybil. I thought you asked me something else, Sybil. God damn it. <laughs> Like May May 21st through the 23rd, we will be at the Cleveland Improv. Oh, nice. I think our girl Dominique is there this weekend. She I does, yeah. Okay. yeah right. in the land. 21st through the 23rd, come oh. see us live, vaccinated. Live in the land. And hysterical. We love, we love, we love. Live in the right. land. And we're going to be funny as shit somewhere. Right? I know that. Oh, no, look, at, look, at, look at that. Look at fucking funny. <laughs> More funny than you were tonight? No. No, don't don't face the other <laughs> come come yeah. <laughs> Let this not be a reflection on whether or not you come to the show. We'll be a lot funny at the show. Not that we know. have ass in silver, but you know. <laughs> I don't know. We that get to cuss and shit at, on, on stage. We get to say shit we can't say to, to, to you know. Yeah, that, that you can't say. Cussing all night tonight. Huh? <laughs> I said we've been cussing all night tonight. Does Fuck anybody? You know we have, does anybody else? Have them, <laughs> Simple, do we, does anybody else curse as much as us on this show? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Jay or George? Jay, <clears throat> both. Well, George doesn't. George doesn't cuss so much as as Jay does, but Jay, you know, he just loves. George, George, does, George doesn't cuss that much. Period. He only cusses no. when no. the nurses don't bring him his tray. <laughs> <laughs> I said two bananas. <laughs> Petunia. Um, so it is now time for uh, our friend and yours. It's time for Yogi's Juice. Rastafari! Yogi, Yogi, Yogi! 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 Yogi, Bullet, bullet, bullet. Come again. <laughs> okay, that's it. Okay, okay. Um, I don't know about anybody else, but this this hour has done so much for my mental health. Um, and speaking of which, spread good, positive energy, even when you don't feel like it. Yogi, she wrote. <laughs> Yogi, she wrote. <laughs> boyaka, boyaka. <laughs> <laughs> so go forth, gentlemen. Spread that good, positive energy, even when you don't feel like it. And and I didn't uh, in parentheses it says, "Damn it." Um. So we appreciate that. We appreciate, and I appreciate you guys. Appreciate appreciate we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, and George Wallace tonight, y'all. Watch George. Look at those Jimmy ratings. Look at George, those ratings big. Shout out on Jimmy Kimmel. We're gonna be in Cleveland, and we're gonna be. In <laughs> And if you don't, motherfucker, it's going to be terrible. <laughs> I'm going to call him the whole time, Chris. Right <laughs> no. Positively brilliant. And uh, don't forget our girl Kim Whitley and Coco Brown on The Neighborhood. In on just The Neighborhood. Minutes. That's right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you. And bye -bye. Uh, have I have a wonderful week. I'll see you next Monday. Yep. Absolutely. absolutely. Hey, and I'm committing to it, Silver. Absolutely. Look at you committing. Okay. Absolutely.
<laughs> no, I said I, was, I ran out of absolute. <laughs> I didn't commit. I said, I'm absolutely out of Baca right there. Bye. Uh, I'll see you next month. Tomorrow is J. Anthony Brown, and he wants to talk about a lot that Chris and Huggy covered today. So we will we will return, and you are free to come back.